soul anyway, and how can you tell? And what about young souls? Where do they fit into the picture? This morning, one of our favorite regulars, both to you and the inside staff, faith reader Barbara Roberts, joined us to talk about soul age. Barbara has studied the ancient Chinese practice of faith reading for many years and conducts classes as well as individual consultations. Good morning and welcome for the final time on Inside. Maybe it's kind of fitting that, that, that we chose, that you chose this topic, because it, it's a little bit of a difficult one. You have to learn to look for it. So with that, what is soul age, and, 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 and how, do you, how do you read it in the face? Okay. Soul age is the degree of inner maturation of, de of a person's depth, their development, their compassion, their degree of tolerance for other people, forgiveness. So that's what you're reading, and you read it in the eye tone. And what you're looking at in the eye is not so much the shape, or the size, or the person's um, racial background, or age. You're looking for the degree of radiance in and, the eye. And that's right. something we're not trained to do. We're trained yes. to look at how high the eyebrows arch, or the color of the, the eye. color of the eye. But not this. And, and, and it may seem obvious, but, but why, in the context of everything, is this so important to understand? People, I feel people come to learn different things when they come, you know, in their lifetime. You don't expect the same thing from a kindergartner as you do from someone with a master's degree. Um, younger souls, for example, they're... I well, let's them. begin, okay, we'll begin, with let's begin by show showing what, what the viewers can see what I'm talking about. What represents a young soul? A young soul, when you look at the eye tone, what you're going to see, Laura, there's a flat quality, a cool quality. My teacher, Narayan calls this thing, said that your eyes bounce right back. You try to go into the eyes when you're looking at the person, but your eyes come right back. There's no depth there. Now, a young soul, they need um, a lot of discipline. They're attracted to situations that are very um, full of rules, like the people in Waco, perhaps. You know, they, they need a lot of discipline. Um, they respond to that. They're attracted to a lot of dogma sometimes, not hmm. so tolerant of other people. Also, younger souls, if we have a problem, a young soul feels tremendously victimized their whole life by it, and they see that they have no part in the interchange. It's a very, sometimes narcissistic, and sometimes young souls are criminals if the face is very poorly aspected, because he, they have no introspection. Well, what's interesting, said, uh, you said narcissistic, and I noticed that a lot of examples that I've known you, you know, for the past couple of years, are very attractive there and I don't mean to demean models by no. this at all and not all models are young souls but the photograph is, is it that that clarity and absence of depth <laughs> photograph so well seriously oh it does it's great <laughs> I wonder if it shows something about our American love. <laughs> we won't comment on that. I'm not sure. I'm pace. You know? But it's something interesting to look at. Now I think we'll all be looking so much more closely now at everyone we see. Um, th now there's, there's a kind of middle ground there. What yeah. you call a mature soul. What mature is that? Soul. Where does it fit between the two extremes? Okay, I'll explain that. The other part, too, is that there's always a continuum. It's not like a cut-off, young, cut-off, mature. There are young, mature souls and mature old souls. Mature soul, you look now, you can see a little more depth into the eyes. Your eyes go further into the eye as you're looking. Um, there's more warmth there than in the first picture. Yeah. Um, in a mature soul, they are interested in changing the world. A young soul is interested in playing. A mature soul is interested, they may be great teachers, writers, um, professions somewhat irrelevant actually, but they're interested in changing other people. If we have a conflict and I'm a mature soul, you you are the problem. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound so much more to me. Well, it's... In compared to old souls, you'll see the difference. That's, they're just terms. One of those, in fact, the top one looked like a, a, a Christy Brinkley. I'm not sure if that was her. I think that was Christy Brinkley. But what's interesting is when I looked into their eyes and see, you know, I'm a novice at this. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost as though I could see beyond the eye. That's maybe that's the best yeah. way to explain to Good. people. It's like I could see a, a little beyond. Of yeah. Like the old souls, the next pictures we have, an old soul is looking back at you when you look at them. You see, I guess, yeah. the wind chime tunnel, something happening between the two ears. <laughs> the older soul, the top picture is Paramahansa Yogananda. And who is he? He is an Indian saint, and the bottom is St. Teresa of Lisieux, and she's a French saint. And these two are incorruptible, and what that means is that they are so deep spiritually that when they left their body, consciously, their body never decayed. And so people come from all over the world for these pilgrimage sites at these places where these are great saints and sages. These are the old souls. The quality in the eye, and you see this particularly in Yogananda's eyes, they're, it's like ripe fruit ready to fall. There's compassion, there's love. These are the people we come to for understanding. They um, are the spiritual giants. That's how I would put it together. And when there's a problem, 
um, and also says to yourself, what are my lessons in this? What do I have to change in myself? They're here to change themselves, like Gandhi. But you can just keep looking and looking and very looking deep. there. There's a lot of depth, and they're looking back at you from a very deep place. You used a really practical example to explain this when you were talking about perhaps a person who is married wrong. Explain, oh, okay. Use that okay. example. Well, we were just saying that in an old soul, if I'm marrying um, 10 men, all of whom are drug addicts and alcoholics, at some point as an older soul, I say to myself, um, what is it I have to learn from attracting these men? Why am I, you know, walking to a party and the only men I attract are drug addicts, you know, as an example, <laughs> alcoholic men. You know, there's something that I'm doing in my behavior. An older soul starts looking at that to change themselves. To say, hey, maybe it's not them. It's me. The yeah. answers are within. Me. Um, we're going to... We're going to show uh, comparing the young and the old soul. This, uh, the top of, is a very young soul, and these are Yogananda's eyes at the bottom. And you see the flatness at the top, the cool quality, compared to Yogananda's with a lot of compassion, forgiveness, depth, warmth, the bottom eyes of Yogananda's. So you can see the, the difference. You know, we always talk about the ratio, you know, where there's compatibility. You say a couple basically needs to be kind of 70% alike, 30% differences. When it comes to soul age, when you've got a young soul with an old soul, can, can that work as one the teacher and one the student? Sometimes that doesn't go very well because often the, the older soul gets bored. You know, because they're, yeah. what they're looking for is inner development and change with themselves. The younger soul often... Um, likes to feel um, dominated or restricted or they need tight rules and regulations so what they mm. need is different that's why it doesn't work not that the people are right or wrong yeah. it's a different style of life their interests are different and it's, that's that's what's fascinating it is fascinating because when you all now look at your loved one or just friends or just people on the street you know what i found most amazing you talk about soul age when they made the movie uh, one of the uh, uh, george lucas star wars films okay. when they made yoda, yoda they wanted him to have these wise wonderful eyes mm -hmm. and they used albert einstein, einstein who is an older soul yeah. isn't that incredible and martin luther king great souls ah oh. This is, this is, this is a, a wonderful way to, to wrap up all this. We adore you. We love you. We'll be seeing you in the future. And uh, thank you so much. And I want to say that you have a teaching class. Barbara's going to have a beginning teaching class. And this one will be in San Diego City, which I never do. All right. It'll be of April. April 25th. You call us for any more details and also individual sessions. Thank you, my friend. Thanks, Laura. Bye-bye. <laughs>